Good morning. In this class, we will study about classical theory of Raman effect, Raman spectroscopy. We have already studied the quantum theory of Raman effect, introduction of Raman spectroscopy, what are elastic scattering, what are inelastic scattering, what are called relay scattering and Raman scattering. Please watch the quantum theory of Raman effect, um, the video lesson already. There are two theories, classical theory and quantum theory to explain the mechanism of Raman effect or Raman spectroscopy. Before we study the classical theory, let us study about an electromagnetic radiation or electromagnetic wave. What is an electromagnetic radiation? For example, IR radiation, microwave radiation, gamma rays, uh, UV rays, visible rays, these are all electromagnetic radiation. So, any electromagnetic radiation or wave consists of two components, an electric field vector along y-axis and a magnetic field along z-axis, the wave, the radiation is traveling in the x-direction. As you see, these two fields, these two vectors are perpendicular to each, mutually perpendicular to each other and also to the propagation of the wave. Okay. Now, when electric field, let us consider a molecule, when electric field, when an electromagnetic radiation falls on it, when an electromagnetic radiation falls on it or when electric field is applied to a molecule, especially visible light, electromagnetic radiation is used in Raman spectroscopy. When it falls, the electric field interacts with the molecule because of the electronic motion. In the case of um, NMR and EPR, magnetic field vector interacts with the molecule. For example, paramagnetic molecule with the spin. Um, okay. Now, when electric field is applied in the presence of electromagnetic radiation, that is in the presence of electric field, the electrons and nuclei are displaced you see in the presence of in the absence of electric field in the presence of electric field the electrons and nuclei are displaced causing polarization or induced dipole moment plus minus or separated they give they cause they give in induced dipole moment called polarization this polarization or the induced, the amount of polarization is directly proportional to the magnitude of electric field E. Therefore, P is directly proportional to E. Alpha is called proportionality constant, where alpha is called polarizability. In other words, when an atom or molecule is placed in the electric field, Polarization occurs or electric dipole moment is induced in the system. Induced dipole moment. It is different from permanent dipole moment. Please remember the magnitude of this polarization. The magnitude of this polarization or induced dipole moment is directly proportional to the magnitude of the electric field vector P proportional to alpha E where alpha is known as the polarizability, the presence of electric field E induces polarization in the molecules as you see here. Let us derive the mathematical equations of classical theory of Raman effect. As we have seen, P is directly proportional to E. Therefore, P equal to alpha into E. Let us call this equation as 1. Then the electric field, the applied electric field vector 
is a sine wave or cos wave cos 2 pi nu t or it can also be sine 2 pi nu t the electric field the electric field is represented by this mathematical equation e equal to e naught sine 2 pi nu t where nu is the frequency of the incident electromagnetic radiation substitute 2 in 1 let us substitute this in this equation therefore p equal to alpha alpha e naught sine 2 pi nu t that t is the time nu is the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation falling on the sample the expression for alpha the mathematical expression for alpha is equal to alpha naught plus beta sin 2 pi nu v t where nu v equal to the vibrational frequency or the frequency of the vibrational mode particular vibrational mode where beta equal to d alpha by d alpha by d q it is nothing but the rate of change in polarization of the molecule the rate of change in polarizability of the molecule with respect to coordinate x comma y comma z or r bond distance alpha naught equal to equilibrium polarizability or polarizability at equilibrium bond length now let us substitute this alpha in this equation so you will get or p equal to alpha naught plus on substituting here plus beta sin 2 pi nu v t into e naught sin 2 pi nu t. Let us call this as equation 5. On multiplying inside p equal to alpha naught polarization or induced dipole moment equal to alpha naught e naught sin 2 pi nu t plus e naught beta sin 2 pi nu t sin 2 pi nu v t by applying the trigonometric formula see this is sin a sin b so sin a sin b equal to 1 by 2 this is a trigonometry formula we know from mathematics 1 by 2 cos a minus b minus cos a plus b therefore b equal to alpha naught e naught this term remains the same e naught 2 pi nu t plus 1 by 2 beta e naught cos 2 pi nu minus nu v into t cos 2 pi nu plus nu v t there are three terms in this equation the first term represents the Rayleigh scattering the second term and third term represents represent Stokes and anti Stokes scattering respectively we have already studied in quantum theory what are elastic scattering due to elastic scat elastic scattering we get relay scattering due to inelastic scattering we get stokes and anti stokes scattering we have already studied please watch the quantum theory we have already studied okay so in the case of relay scattering the frequency of the scattered light is equal to the is equal to the frequency of the incident electromagnetic radiation okay the same is scattered whereas in the case of stokes scattering the frequency of the scattered light is less than the frequency of the incident light because of the interaction of the electric field electric field vector to cause the vibrational transition or in the case of rotational Raman spectroscopy they cause the the part of light observed causes vibrational transition or rotational transition therefore the energy emitted is less whereas it is just opposite plus anti-stoke scattering this is like absorption and this is like emission the the frequency of the scattered light is much more than the incident electromagnetic radiation because of the uh, addition of um, vibrational 
emission vibrational mode emission so the vibrational mode or the vibrational motion or rotational motion which cause change in polarization or change in polarizability that is change in shape size of the electron cloud we have seen earlier can only be roman active for roman active for roman for vibrational transition or rotational transition to be roman active the molecule must have must undergo a change in polarizability during the vibrational motion or rotational motion for example carbon dioxide let us consider carbon dioxide symmetric stretching and asymmetric stretching of carbon dioxide molecules to explain this polarizability how the change in polarizability is useful in obtaining roman spectra for example symmetric stretching in the case of symmetric stretching both the bonds are elongated both the bonds are stretched out or both the bonds are compressed equally therefore there is no change in dipole moment there is no net change in molecular dipole moment because plus minus plus minus so no change in dipole moment because of uh, both the bonds are stretched equally or compressed equally mu equal to 0 whereas in asymmetric stretching as you see one of the bond is compressed one of the bond is elongated therefore this is different mu this is different mu therefore mu not equal to 0 due to asymmetric stretching vibration there is a change in the net dipole moment therefore ir active on the other hand roman inactive here ir inactive because there is no change in dipole moment why it is roman active now you see both the bonds are stretched both the bonds are more polarizable now see it becomes more ellipsoid more elongated so ellipsoid so overall there is a change in polarizability that is we have seen earlier for roman active there should be the mole there should be change in polarizability so there is a change in both more both the bonds are more polarizable therefore there is a net change in polarizability therefore symmetric stretching is roman active we have explained why it is roman active whereas in the case of asymmetric stretching ir active because there is a change in dipole moment here in asymmetric stretching one bond is stretched more polarizable one bond is compressed less polarizable therefore there is a net there is the change in polarizability of the long bond is compensated or balanced or offset by the change in shorter bond so the overall polarizability there is no overall change in polarizability of the molecule because of the offset because of uh, exactly balanced this is balanced by this here this this uh, there is a net change in polarizability here the overall there is there is a net there is no net change in polarizability therefore asymmetric stretch is not roman active okay another molecule for example diatomic linear molecule diatomic linear molecule this is the hydrogen molecule this is the bond axis internuclear axis okay the electric field is in this direction the molecule is uh, rotated here the electric field is perpendicular to the internuclear bond here the electric field is parallel to the 
internuclear axis. Here the polarizability is less. Here the polarizability is larger when the electric field direction is along the internuclear axis. Okay, the polarizability is higher along this direction. Therefore, there is a anisotropic polarizability. There is polarizability, anisotropy behavior in polarizability. The polarizability is different in different directions. As you see, the polarizability is uh, different in different directions. There is a change in polarizability due to either rotation or vibration motion. Therefore, homonuclear diatomic molecules are Raman active because of the change in polarizability. Okay. Whereas, this is mu equal to 0 for homonuclear diatomic molecule. The dipole moment mu equal to 0, therefore IR inactive. Because they have no dipole moment, they are IR inactive, but they are Raman active because of the stretching um, contraction, because of the vibrational motion, motion, because of the vibrational rotational motion. This causes, causing change in polarizability. So the thumb rule is, Change in polarizability for molecules to be IR Raman active. There is there should be the molecule must undergo a change in polarizability. For IR transition, there should be change in dipole moment. Okay. What are the important applications of studying Raman effects? The vibrational rotational Raman spectra or of homonuclear diatomic molecules are of very much important because homonuclear diatomic molecule symmetric stretching symmetric vibration mode of uh, polyatomic molecules are not observed in IR spectroscopy the because because from this vibrational rotational Raman spectra they give force constants and rotational constants. Vibrational spectroscopy give force constants. Rotational spectroscopy give rotational constants that are not obtained from microwave spectroscopy. Microwave spectroscopy is used to, to obtain rotational constant. Infrared spectroscopy is used to, to obtain force constants. From from these parameters, from these constants, the bonding parameters are obtained. For example, the bond strength, single bond, double bond, triple bond, bond length, bond strength can be calculated. Okay. Thank you for watching.